what's up you guys this is rob from a gay guy plays and today on the daily grind we're gonna be taking a look at a plethora of operator goodies starting first and foremost with the t4 prism and scaffold that came from cetus that i totally forgot to cover when they first came out then we're gonna go ahead and move into some things from fortuna the lockdown and overload magus arcane things and i'm gonna be honest with you i played around with them on stream and i was like wait a second this is really really good of course that was just some simulacrum stuff however as you can see in the background i went ahead and took this into eso as well as while i was leveling up the amps and i was like, I was like holy shit I keep getting a lot of like, not necessarily big damage numbers, but I keep getting like a lot of damage done within the team. And I was like, oh, I got to go ahead and share this today. So without ado, let's go ahead and jump on in. Alrighty, so before we jump into the gameplay, I wanted to go ahead and show you the stats on this without my current bracer affecting it. So as you can see, the ran on its own after it's built and gilded has a 30% critical chance and a 2 point times multiplier. Um, it's also got a very, very low status chance sitting at 4%. It does 1,000 points of void damage and it's got a decent fire rate to it at 5.67. The accuracy is kind of like, it says it's good, but it doesn't feel that good, okay? Moving on, the Fad Scaffold has a 34% critical chance. So as you can see, both are crit heavy and it's got a 2.6 times critical multiplier. It does have a slightly larger status chance at 12%. However, its fire rate is kind of slow. It's really, really interesting because it shoots out these discs. Now, the Antispa Spatha Braith, listen, I can never pronounce anything. This one was a little bit boring to me, so I actually didn't go ahead and use that one on my specific weapon. But this one reduces the regeneration delay and decreases the regeneration time, but not as quickly as a single purpose brace. It's really boring, so what I actually have personally on mine is the Certus Brace. So as you can see, that actually buffs up these stats up to 50% on the critical chance for the Prism and up to 54% on the Scaffold. So that's what I ended up going with because the other one was just boring, and who needs boring? Alrighty, so as you can see here, we've got a little bit of a mix of Corrupted Butcher, Corrupted Moa, and Corrupted Heavy Gunner. Um, I do have their enemy level set to 60 because we are going to be playing around with the amp. And y'all know, y'all know these amps are not ridiculously strong. So we're going to kind of have a little bit of a baseline. I'm going to try to not use, like, the amp's abilities, but... As you can see with the prism, it's just a straightforward kind of like um, automatic B, uh, rifle. And I kind of like it. I kind of like it. There's nothing too special to it. Um, but the fire rate feels good and the amount of damage that you do for the fire rate is not bad at all. So I definitely cannot hate it. Against level 60s, you know, it's not the most impressive. But I think that maybe if we put on the appropriate elemental um what is it called the elemental arcanes that they have i think that it's a it's a pretty good it'll okay it's gonna be okay it's as good as this is gonna get for now so let's go ahead and move on to the what is it called let's go ahead and move on to the scaffold which i actually really like now this thing as you can see it freaking shoots these discs that I kind of absolutely love. Look, and they've got such good, like, they've got such good tracking, too. Um, now, of course, it works really, really well when you've got multiple targets. Uh, but when you only have a single target, it's not as impressive, which is kind of sad. So let's go ahead and try that one more time so you can get a better look at the uh, scaffold. Um, because the prism is pretty basic. The prism is pretty basic. There's nothing too nutso about it. But as you can see right here, it's getting multiple hits off. And I'm only, like, firing off one at a time, but I'm sure you can fire off, like, a slew of them. See? And they are all bouncing between their targets. And the tracing is really freaking good. Oh, no. I've given away I've given away the secret abilities that we're going to be taking a look at in a second. Um, so for me, this isn't necessarily... Um, this isn't necessarily my favorite of the other two. I think that's my favorite of the uh, fully autos, um, but it's definitely like not my favorite of the bunch bunch. However, I will say that the uh, secondary is pretty gosh darn fun when you see the blades just bouncing all over the place and you're able to fire off multiple at once. It's just a little bit of a good time. Now, moving along to the arcanes, we have Magus Lockdown and Magus Overload. So starting with Lockdown, you drop a tether mine at the destination that tethers up to six enemies within nine meters. The tether mine explodes, dealing 45% of their health as puncture damage after four seconds. So as you can see, we are playing around 
around with percentages here, and that's what makes this ridiculously strong, or at least in my opinion, really, really strong. Then we're moving on to Magus Overload. This one is a little bit more specific. As you can see on Void Blast, it stuns robotic enemies for three seconds, which then discharge electricity damage, dealing 60% of their max health to anyone within um, 20 meters. Now, I don't know. It's got these slashes. No, I think that's just the ranking up. I think that they just didn't change. Yeah, they just didn't change the terminology. So I'm going to say uh, it's going to be 60% in 20 meters as it ranks up. Get this, get this together. What is? Why is this so sloppy? Mm. So moving along to the arcanes, as you can see, we are bumping things back up to 160 because I feel like these arcanes are kind of nasty. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this performs. First, we've got the Magus Lockdown. As you can see, we've just locked down that entire group of enemies. And in a few moments, boom, they are exploding. So as you can see, that's how much damage they've already got done. And then it's done. Isn't that kind of nutso? I feel like for me, because it's percentage damage, like it's actually fairly substantial. And just keep in mind, I'm literally just sitting here just doing nothing i'm just letting the damage tick away so that is magus lockdown as you can see it looks like our heavy gunners were uh, stripped off by my kitty cat which is kind of like the big thing that i wanted to show is if you can get the armor off of these enemies or if you have unarmored targets magus lockdown is actually pretty good and i feel like magus lockdown was honestly um what got me i'm gonna do two rounds of this honestly what was able to give me the ability to do as much damage as i did in those teams so again magus lockdown just lets you go through and just keep enemies tied up now i will say one thing this does not work as well um if you are not the host because i actually did this in a couple groups and it was just not working as well and it almost seemed as if like it was only happening occasionally like there was a percentage chance for it to happen but sometimes it would happen like three times in a row and then sometimes it would just like not happen at all which is kind of weird and then when i did a solo mission with it um when i did a solo mission with it it went off 100 percent of the time so it was just one of those things where i'm like okay this is kind of weird and odd i really don't know what to say but i think it's going to be like a client side issue now, the other one that I wanted to go ahead and show off, of course, we have uh, the Magus Lockdown, which is this tethering thing. And then we also have Magus Overload, and I wanted to go ahead and show how this works. So um, let's just, let's, I'm just going to slide in. So this is actually going to stun the electronic targets, and as you can see, they... <laughs> They deal damage to the enemies um, outside of them. So if you stun a, an unlocked ele electronic target or a robotic target, when they explode and they do their discharge damage, it'll do it to everybody but themselves. So keep that in mind. So it's not going to actually do it. It's not actually going to do it to the bots themselves. It'll only do it to the enemies surrounding those bots. So let's go ahead and show that one more time. So let's let's go over here. I'm going to go ahead and stun these duders. Hi, you're stunned. And then they're going to discharge. And they basically killed all the trash mobs over here. Now, unfortunately, since we don't have any more of those targets in this little area over here, <laughs> he always does the little, <laughs> little dance. Um, what do you call this? Since we don't have any more of those uh, targets, since we have no more of those targets, unfortunately, we can't do the... Uh, look at look at how many bounces that thing has. It's ridiculous. Um, what do you call this? Uh, because there's no more electronic targets, it won't actually do anything for us, which is really sad because it does feel very restricted in that way, shape, or form. However, however, um, it's it still works well when you're facing up against the Corpus and even sometimes the Corrupted if you've got a whole bunch of MOAs. So let's go ahead and pair the two of those together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock all these guys down and then I'm going to stun those. So now we have the explosion off of those guys and then hopefully we can get uh, the kitty to go ahead and stun. This guy's already almost like dead. That's how that's how great it is if you got a if you got a, a little kitty to strip the armor off of them. Boom. And then we are done. And then of course, because ah because the damage uh, was done pinning down the guy, he's going to deal uh, that damage to himself and because he's got no armor, there's nothing to mitigate it. So it's kind of nuts. If you guys have not tried out uh, the new um 
Augments, not Augments, Arcanes from Valis, definitely give them a shot. I'm really a big fan of the Overload and Lockdown. Uh, I will be picking up more soon. As you guys know, I'm kind of like on my retirement run. You know, I always... Every year I always call it the retirement run, whereas like there's nothing to do in Warframe except for like do a clean sweep of all of the shit that you like missed out on. And that's kind of what I'm doing now. Let me know if there are any particular arcanes you guys want me to go ahead and check out next. Also, let me know what you think about the Prism and Scaffold. Regardless, that about does it for me for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this um, and I will chat with you guys again soon. So as always, love somebody, hurt nobody, and touch your flying discs. Bye!